Hi, I'm Lori George with Let's Make Art. Today we're gonna to be painting our bullfrog friend. Ooh. We have Keenan here today running the camera. Hi, Keenan. Keenan here, hello. Hello, hello. And this is a fun project where you might get a little bit messy in a very good way. Good. Okay, so let me talk about our supplies today. Today we have brushes. I'm gonna use the three quarter inch flat wash brush, the half inch flat wash, and the round number eight. We also have a little bit, of, if you got the wetlands box, you got our little texture tools kit. My, my scraper looks different than what yours will because we got you a custom shape. Ooh. But we have a chip brush. We're gonna use that for some fun stuff. Just wait, Keenan. Yes. And we have, so this is our scraper tool. And then we have a bamboo skewer where we can scratch in. Ooh, the old graffito. Yes. Okay, we also have an outline. So you can get that if you have our box. It comes in there. Um, otherwise, you can get it on our website. Mm -hmm. And we are going to use this outline if you would like to, or you can draw your own. And to do that, I have a piece of chalk. Oh. So if you have a piece of chalk, you can get that out. If you want to try and draw your own frog, um, I recommend making more than one of these. And yeah. actually, we are for our Let's Make Art Matter project this month, we are going to be sending a ton of bullfrog friends, or we're calling them frog selfies, to our recipient. <laughs> and we're excited for him to get those frogs. So tune in for that one if you want to see even more froggy friends. Yes, please. Okay, lots of options there. Okay, where was I? So if you don't have a scraper tool, you could also use one of these, like a, it's a catalyst wedge. I think we, ca we carry these in our shop or will be very, very soon. And we're, if you're doing the outline, you can have some tape, graphite paper, which is in the Let's Make Art Matter envelope and a pencil of some sort. For washing out our brushes, I use our, this brush basin that we have in our shop also. And I like to use shop towels for my paper towel. Sturdy, reusable, very yeah. absorbent. You're the first person I know that uses shop towels instead of paper towels, and they are sweet. They are. I'm pretty sure I saw the idea somewhere else. Can't claim, you know, sure, sure, the sure. idea, but I enjoy it. It's good. All right, we also, oh, I can't forget about the, kind of the star of the box. These are the Neo colors. Ooh. They are water soluble. You can see they don't usually come with paint on them, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> they are water soluble wax pastels. And that means that they're activated by water. But I'll show you how the different ways that you can use them. You can draw with them. You can um, draw and then add water. You can dip them in water, all sorts of stuff. But we're going to be using these today and having some fun with them. And if you, I mean, I'll show you real quick, actually. We have, if you did get the box, we have this reference guide all about neo colors and things that you can do with them and then a special bonus project box bonus. exclusive on the back yeah you know we like to give you plenty we, of stuff to, to explore and do we care about you neo colors are one of my absolute favorite art supplies if you've seen any of my videos you probably already heard me talk about it they're they're awesome i love having all the different colors and yeah look at that kit it's a lot of fun a lot of fun and last, but, oh, okay, we also have palette. Today I'm using a glass palette. Use whatever you have. If you've got the box, you'll have a piece of palette paper that came with it that you can use for your palette. Palette paper is pretty magical. Yep. Oh, and of course we have watercolor paper. Huh? I'm oh. just using, um, let's make art watercolor paper and with the rough side up. And I think last but not least, we have our paint. So in this wetlands box, I wanted to use, I wanted to introduce you to heavy body paint. This is professional, high grade, like um, really nice quality paint where the pi highly pigmented, you're gonna get great color mixes from it and I'm excited for you to try it. The heavy body is nice because it's a nice smooth consistency and you can um, put it on thick or you can add water and put it on thin. I mean, there's just so many options. And we have a uh, titanium white, yellow light Hansa, Napsol Crimson, Thalo green, it's a longer name, but I say Thalo. <laughs> Ultramarine blue and Mars black. So we are going to have fun with that. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, oh, let me go over the steps. Okay, so our first step is gonna be to do the underpainting. It's kind of like a surprise layer that we're gonna add in there that kind of pops out in the end result by kind of being that little sneaky layer underneath. Oh, good. Number two, we're gonna do some fun layers to create some nice texture get a little messy, make our bullfrog friend like just special. Yes. And then we're gonna do some splattering. What? Yeah. That's gonna be messy. One of my favorite things. You should see 
the messes I've made. <laughs> uh, next, we're gonna do some negative shape painting where we're gonna cut out the shape of our frog oh. using paint. And then we're gonna outline our frog with like a black um, color. Then we're gonna do some things to make the form and the shape of the frog. Then we're gonna play with our Neo colors. And then we're gonna do our finishing touches. Sweet. Sound good? Sounds great. Okay, let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna take my paper. And so like I said, and also I have the step sheet here. If you have the box, you have the step sheet as well. And so I will try and follow that so we can be on the same page if you're following along with that as well. You also have a reference image here that you can have out. Does this frog have a name? This particular frog does not have a name yet. Mm. We should take suggestions. Okay. Maybe comment uh, yes. on this video and share what you think this frog's name should be. Yes, please. What does he want to be called? Or she. <gasps> Or she? Oh, I yes. I am referring to him as he. So That's true. Hmm. It just feels it was a little inclusive. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, love to hear your ideas. We are going to start with a warm background layer. If you've painted some of the other projects that, with me, you know that sometimes we paint an underpainting where we use an opposite toned color. So either like a warm color that, and we know that a cool color is going to go on top, and so the warm color can kind of peek through. Um, mm. or vice versa, something cool when you have something warm on top and that pokes through. So it's just a nice way to add some depth and dimension um, to make your painting a little less flat and a little more interesting. Yep. I think. Okay. No, I agree. I mean, from what I've seen so far. Think so? I agree. Okay. All right. So we're going to take our um, red and our yellow. And I'm not going to add any white to this. A lot of times when I do washes or background or under layers, I add a little bit of white, but this time we're gonna stay with the pure colors. All right, and I'm gonna take my three and my three quarter inch brush because we're gonna fill this whole page. And as you can see from the step sheet, this is not one solid mass. I wanted it to have some variety, so then at the in the end, you can kind of see it in here. See how we have some little flecks of orange poking oh, through yeah. up there? It's just these little subtle hints of, of some opposite tones, oh, that's opposite nice. like um, temperatures. Temperatures. Yes. All right. So what I so I'll show you kind of how I um, vary it. Honestly, what I do is I just um, kind of dab. So I'm going to dab. Okay. We're going to add water. Don't worry. And I'm going to dab some yellow in there. Okay. Dab dab dab. I already like this. And then <laughs> Keenan's like, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Yep. You had me a dab. You had me a dab. Okay, so all I'm doing now is just dipping my brush into the water. I wanna be sure that I don't go too heavy with the red into this yellow section, but um, just because it'll, it'll, it'll overpower the yellow. But I'm gonna work this red in here. And really, this is a great way to cover all of the white of your page so that you, one, don't feel intimidated by that stark white page looking right at you on paper. Um, and also, so we don't have to worry as we do layers to make sure that everything's covered. I don't have those little white specks. I'll get there, I'm gonna get some more red, red paint, I think. I'm gonna do my red sections in here. You can tape your paper if you would like. Um, I typically just paint to the edge. I like that look. I like the taping look too. I just don't usually take the time. Do you ever cut down your paper to fit in a frame or do you, what do you do? I usually, if I have a, a work on paper, I will mat it, put it like a white mat with a backing board. Uh, like if I'm selling, okay. when I sell my art yeah. and things like that. Yeah, that's what I'll do. So I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, you know what I didn't mention? I love to have a brush board and basically what that is, is just an extra piece of paper or a canvas where you can brush off your extra paint. Cause you're always gonna have a little extra paint. And yes. so all I do is, rough side up, is I just take my paint, whatever's on my brush, and just like throw it down there. You can do it in a meaningful way or you can just kind of be haphazard and that's okay. All right, so now we're gonna pick up a little bit more water. I wanted to get some of that red out um, so that this yellow could have a space. Breathe. To show, yeah. <laughs> All right, and really the main purpose of this is to cover the white and to have something kind of interesting poking out from a little flex here and there, a little surprise. 
I like to do these layers. We have a similar one in our um, wild sunflower mm. or the landscape if you got the acrylic starter box. Yeah. Okay. So like that is fine. Like it does not matter what this looks like other than like just look around and see if there's any little white flecks of the paper showing through, get those covered. And otherwise we're good to go. Before it dries, take your skewer and just scratch some little lines in there. Yeah, get crazy with it. I want this to just be like super textured. And if it's not like doing a whole lot, you can add a, slap a little bit more paint on there. Mm -hmm. and then go for it. Sweet. Nice. Okay. Some of that might not show through, but a little bit of it will, and that's my goal. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just brush some of this on here. All right. We want to let this dry before moving on to the next step, so if you have a heated tool, you can use that to dry. Um, I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes, and we'll be right back. Okay, now that this underpainting is dry, we're gonna move on to the next layers. Oh yeah. These layers are going to be what gives our frog the greens and the textures and all of that coolness. Coolness. Awesomeness. All right, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna move my water here for a few minutes okay. and clear off my palette. We are going to mix several colors of greens and blues greenish blues, right? So different, different temperatures of green, basically, warms and cools. You can see here on the step sheet that it shows my actual paint piles that I had when I was working on this next step. So to do that, you're just gonna wanna get some, uh, let's see, I know I'll probably put my water back up there in a minute. So some yellow, good amount. Yellow is probably the one you're gonna use um, the most. Some blue. And I'm gonna leave the lids off. Some green and some black. I like to, I tend to put my um, colors in order from value. I missed, missed with the white. I'll just add it here though. And some white. All right, and so what I'm trying to do, like I said, is just get a, a variety of greens. And so if you have a palette knife, you can mix with that. If you have a brush, you can use that. Um, whatever works for you. And I'm actually thinking I'm gonna need more paint than this. I don't remember correctly, I'm gonna kind of double what I put out. You'll want some extra paint here. Um, be generous. All right. So I think I'll start with some of my darker values. So I'm gonna take this black here and put that there. And then I'm going to, I'm gonna use a different palette knife to dip into my yellow. I'm going to put some yellow with that black, okay? And I'll use that paint in a different mix here. And to mix with a palette knife, you just kind of use the back edge of it and kind of smush it around. I think I'm gonna need some more yellow. Oh, that's getting pretty good. We do wanna have some dark values and some light values and some medium values. Oh, plot twist. <laughs> uh, that's too funny. So this is feeling very kind of like um, earthy to me, which isn't too bad, but to give it a tiny bit of kick, I'm gonna add this phthalo blue, or green, excuse me, just to kind of brighten it up a tiny bit. Probably reads pretty black on your screen. It I'm does. Guessing. All right, so let's go ahead and pick up the rest of this yellow. Okay, and then I'm gonna mix it with our blue and see what we come up with. I love mixing colors. Mixing colors is very <laughs> satisfying. Uh, especially with a palette knife. I don't yeah. know, something about like the sound of like clink, 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 clink. Yeah, scrape, it's nice. scrape. It's just so pretty. And I like kind of like the variations, the vari variegations that you see as you're mixing it. I like it. I should be an artist. I should paint. Ha ha ha. Okay, I need more yellow. <laughs> Too funny. All right, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna see what happens. I've added a little bit of white to my phthalo green. Now, if you'll see, phthalo green is a 
very vivid color. For this it's color? It's beautiful. Can you push your palette a little I, closer oh, to your... To the middle? Yeah, there we go. Oh, yes. yes, yes. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Okay. See how bright that is? Yeah, that looks good. That looks Phthalo, like, um, you don't need a lot of it. Very vibrant pigment. Um, since this is so bright, if I don't add something to it to kind of tone it down, it won't really go with this other, these other mm. colors. So I'm just going to pick up a tiny bit. Actually, I'm going to tiny bit of this color and mix it in. Okay, just to tone it down a touch. Can you see that? It's yeah, a very that's a big difference subtle. already. It's subtle to the eye maybe, but like, yeah, if you're watching it, you can see it goes from being super yeah. vibrant to nice, nice. Almost like a minty to whatever that is now. Yeah, yeah. Not minty. It, I think that's it, the technical term. It could be natural mint. It's not minty green. <laughs> no. All right, so I like these shades. I've got a dark, I've got kind of a middle, it's a little bit of a dark green. Let's do, and I'm gonna leave my this on here because I like kind of to introduce the same colors to each other so they talk and speak to each other. And I mean, not literally, but you know what I mean? So they look good together. I think you know that. You can hear the colors. You can hear them, <laughs> yeah. Just listen. <laughs> oh. All right, so my goal is to have like, um, four or five colors that I can pull from when I'm doing our next layer. And since this looks a lot like that, I'm gonna go ahead and add some yellow, or not yellow, white. Hmm. Let's see what we get here. I like it, Ooh, kind of a lighter, nice color. lighter color. And it's different from this one, so I like that. And I notice looking at all of these together that I really do want a warmer green. And to do that, we're gonna grab yellow. And I might just kind of mix with what's on my palette knife and see what we get. Mm. Yep, I like that, that bright yeah, green color. Nice. That is nice. Might add a tiny bit more yellow. Is that just so we have enough of this for what we want to do next? There we go. And see with the yellow, since I already had something on my palette knife, I immediately toned it down so it's not so bright. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of look at my colors real quick and see if there's anything else I want to do. This black is just is pretty dark, so I might add a little bit of white in there just to kind of get a, a little bit more gray. And then I might actually just use what's left of this green, mix that in here. So it looks a little less gray and a little more of a color. Mm. Still kind of a putty type color. Mm -hmm. You know what we could do? Plot twist. Oh. Let's add a tiny bit of red to this. Oh. Red is the complementary color to green and helps to um, desaturate it or make it darker actually too. So add that just to kind of give it a little bit of warmth. Yeah, that what do you think? Nice. I like that. Yeah. Hmm. All right. What a good color. It's a nice color. It could be a good shirt color maybe. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. So we have our beautiful colors mixed, and now we're going to do a little bit of smearing. Yes. <laughs> you could use your palette knife if you wanted to do this. What I think you should use is your scraper tool that you have in your box if you have it. If you don't have a scraper tool, you can use a catalyst wedge or like I said, your palette knife or anything with like a hard edge to it. I want a couple things I want to keep in mind. So I want to preserve some of this background. I wanted to show through. So I do not, what we're going to do is we're add the colors on top. I wanna make sure that I don't cover everything. Let's so keep that in mind. Two, I want variety. Variety is key. So we're going to, um, you're going like this. Did I not say one? Is that what you're thinking? <laughs> one, we wanna keep, <laughs> we wanna keep a lot of this under layer showing through, under painting. Yes. Two, we want to have variety. So I don't want to, I took a lot of time to mix these colors, right? I don't wanna mix them all together now. So I want there to be obvious, that's lime green, that's dark green, that's the you know, mint color. Um, I want to not mix it all together while I'm on my page. Let me show what I'm talking about. Okay. So. I'm excited to see this. Working from dark to light. So I'm gonna take some of this dark and you can use, you can use like the flat edge or whatever, whatever edge you want to. I'm gonna just kind of smear this on, okay? If you want to wear gloves, feel free. I used some shielding lotion too to make my hands easier to wash or e even just regular lotion. Oh yeah. It might get a little messy. 
And the nice thing is it's this heavy body paint. And so like you can kind of leave it on thick if you want. Kind of nice. I'm just gonna go for it, Keaton. I'm gonna get messy. Do it. All right, so then I'm gonna go with this green and I'm gonna kind of put it in different places than what I had my darker value. They're reading similar, actually, in value. Actually look pretty much the same when you put it on here. Isn't that interesting? And then I'm yeah. going to pick up, so I'm gonna wipe off what's left of that darker color so that I can make sure and get another, make sure this color shines through. And then I'm going to add some of this bluer color. Oof, look at that. Ooh, that's alive. Look at that color. Oh man, I love that with the orange. Like that? Yes. See what that was for, right? You be, are you a believer now? I'm such a believer. <laughs> awesome. That means you must have doubted me. Now that's I'm thinking about Ooh, it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> awkward. Okay, so now I'm going to take this um, turquoise color, minty color, whatever you want to call it, and I'm going to kind of dab it. And I don't want to sit here and mix all of it together, right? Because then I'll have just one, one color that's, instead of having a lot of different varieties of color showing through, dab that around. Can kind of push it down on here too. You can leave that texture. I don't know if the side cam will pick that up, but there's a little bit of a texture there from kind of the squishing of the paint. Mm -hmm. Play around, like see what you can get. The whole idea of this step is to create an interesting um, texture and colorful um, body sh color for our frog. Still leaving some pokes of the warm background. And here is the. Uh, Here's, this one's fun. Get some green in there. Wow. Some like yellowy green. I love this color. Now one thing I am thinking about right now is that I want, I'm gonna turn this upside down because see how there's a lot of this yellow green in this area? I'm kind of already thinking ahead to maybe that's gonna be the body of my frog. So I'm gonna kind oh. of think about that. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna kind of, give this part a little bit more of this warmer green because I love that green. All right, so I'm just gonna take a minute now and I don't want necessarily all of these little flecks showing through, especially around like the edges. That might look a little weird if they're all orange, right? So take a minute to just kind of fill in where you think it should be filled in. And then we are gonna scrape in just a second too, so. And don't be afraid of like this texture. This is a heavy body paint. It can hold its, um, Texture pretty dang well, so pretty well. All right, I'm liking that. That looks awesome. I'm liking that. Now we're gonna take our bamboo skewer and without even thinking about it, I'm just gonna be like. You don't even look at it. <laughs> Why look at it? I don't wanna think about it. I just wanna kind of, okay. When I scratch, see how you can see what the underlayer is coming yes. through. If it was just white underneath, it would just be white coming through. But since we took the time to put that under layer um, there, we have a nice little fun peak come through. Fun surprise. All so right. So good. So there's more coming. Let's go ahead and let this layer dry. You can use your heated craft tool if you've got it, or just take a little break and, and come back when it's dry. We'll see you in a little bit. Okay, now that our background, these fun layers have had time to dry, and this one honestly is not completely dry, but it's dry enough for our next step. We are going to add some splatter. Keenan, have you ever splattered anything? I've splattered. <laughs> that sounded weird. <laughs> <laughs> I've splattered watercolor. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. But not. You won't, this won't be too. Acrylic. Oh, foreign for you. You'll have some familiarity perhaps. All right, so at, in this step, it says it can be messy, so plan accordingly, right? Um, you do want to have, be mindful of what's around you because it's hard to control splatter. And so I don't want you to get splatter on your nice stuff. I have paper covering my table um, and anyway, we should be good. But just don't want anybody to be sad that they get splatter on something. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do is we are going to mix a blue green and then we are going to also Actually, we'll start with that. We're gonna mix a blue green. Oh, then we're gonna do a yellow green. I was like, I thought I had two different colors. So to mix the blue green, we are going to use um, blue and yellow. Okay. And this 
Oh yes, for the splattering, we are going to use this chip brush. Mm, I love if chips. you watched beginner series, gosh, what number is that? The second one with the brushes? Mm -hmm. You saw me demo this yes. already. So Keenan, you're somewhat familiar. Oh, I'm, and then I'm a not. little bit of white. That's right. I want this. I want this splatter to kind of um, be a lighter value that really pops a little bit on here. Okay, so we'll kind of see what we've got here. Ooh, I like that. I think I'm gonna add even a tiny bit more white because I know the acrylic will dry a little darker. All right, so I've mixed a color. Let's see. You know what, I'm gonna add a little bit more blue and a little bit more white. A little blue, a little bit white, okay. Oh yeah, okay, I like that we're going a little more blue here. I think that'll look nice with all these greens that we I have. I love that blue. You love that blue? Yeah. I'm so glad. That's like a that's like a a blue I'd wear if it was a shirt, like a button, nice button I think that would be shirt. nice. I think that'd be very elegant. Yeah, elegant. Okay, so one of the key things for splattering is that you need water, and I would say mix enough. Oh, you know, and if a little like piece of the brush comes out, these aren't the most chip brushes aren't the most fancy brushes, but they they sure are a utility player. They get work done. Yeah, they're a worker. Um, you want to have enough water so that your brush is loaded, at least from the um, from about this point up, but not dripping. Like if I'm holding it up and it's dripping, probably too much water. All right, so about like that. Okay, you can see I've got a little bristle coming out there. There are several different methods that you can use for splattering. Let me show you um, a couple. If you want to kind of keep it a little bit neater, you can take your brush and kind of tap okay Ooh. now you can see i'm getting it on myself i've got a i've got a little apron on i wonder if yeah that might even work better okay oh yeah i think i like the chip brush on top better okay what i like to do at home is just use my wrist and flick flick oh flick. snap okay that looks good okay and then if you hold it you can hold it this way and i got those long strokes or you can hold it um, flat, horizontal. horizontal, there you go. Um, and then you'll get a little bit more of a wider spray. Okay? Sweet. That looks crazy. I'm glad I wore the color shirt I did because if I get anything uh -huh. on it, I don't know that it would show. <laughs> <laughs> when I did that first one, I was like, oh boy. <laughs> I didn't follow my own advice. <laughs> All right, love it. Add some interest. We haven't covered up everything else, yay. Um, now I would like to do a little bit more of a yellowy green. Okay, so let's do that. Okay. So I'm just gonna, right next to this pile, add some yellow. Do you usually keep the same uh, paint that's on your brush? I do. Rinse it yet? Okay. I do. Cool. So I'm gonna keep this paint here. Ooh, you know what? I was thinking, gosh, we already have some yellow green. What if we did this super bright green? I'm gonna mix in some of the blue with it because I don't want it to be, that's already on my brush. I don't want it to be so different in temperature that it, or saturation that just looks off. It's shocking. Yeah. But this will be a nice, I think this will be a nice touch. Yeah, that's a great color. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Okay, and then I'm gonna use my, you know, if it doesn't come off when you do that, add a little more water. A little bit of trial and error. Some people um, make a splatter box for themselves. A splatter box? Yeah. And they, they get just like a cardboard box and they put I would, you'd put your painting inside of the box and then you would splatter. Cool. Yeah. And so the idea is that most of the splatter would go onto like the sides of the box and not your furniture, your carpet. Oh, that's smart. <laughs> yeah. Your kids. Probably is, right? Okay. I like it. I'm going to, and I don't mind that there's a little bit of an implied pattern here, but I don't mind that because I know there's more sets coming where we're going to cover some of that up and choose where we put more paint. So we're going to let that dry. Sweet. Okay. While I'm letting that dry, I'm going to add to my brush board. Did I talk about a brush board? I think I did. Yeah, for extra paint, I like to use just a piece of paper for it to add anything left over. And this could become an underpainting for another painting, or it could become an abstract piece, whatever. That chip brush might be one of my new favorite brushes. Really? Yes, that's, I like <laughs> how it looks on the paper. You like that? Yes. It is kind of cool, you know? Like It is. We have several different sizes on our, like we even have like a four inch on our site now. 
Oh, that's a pretty big, I, like I would definitely, if I was doing it on canvas, I could see using a, a large one. If you get a little bristle, just pull it off before it dries. Awesome, that was fun. All right, so we will be back in a few minutes. Okay, these layers are pretty close to being dry and now would be a great time to add a final little touch if you would like. What I wanna do, and you can use your scraper tool for this again, um, wipe it off. I'm gonna take a little bit of this black. I have some black on my palette and I don't want a ton, but I'm gonna lightly, what I, oh, let me explain. What I've done with all of these scratching in things and with the splatter and some of that um, texture that I left on there as I've created a nice bumpy texture. And so I'm gonna kind of highlight that by gently pulling this over some of that texture, okay? See that? That looks cool. Does that look cool? What I feel like heck? it feels almost like little freckles or bumpy part I've of the skin. I've got freckles. Same, <laughs> same, same. See how it's kind of picking up just kind of some of those Whoa. higher elevated stuff. And you can put a little more on in some areas if you want. I do want to try uh, and avoid having a lot of straight edges. So just kind of like go over it again to kind of minimize. Move it around. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, like right there. Yeah. So I just kind of feather it, maybe. That's All right. sweet. So uh, after the stick, you can go ahead and let the, that, this dry and we'll be ready to cut out our frog shape. <gasps> Not with scissors, with oh, paint. <laughs> okay, now that our fun splatter and texture layers are dry, we're gonna move on to the next step, which is negative shape painting. To, cut, to get the shape, the outline of our frog, we can do one of two things. You can use the outline that was given here, okay, where you would tape it down I would probably tape the, this bottom edge to the bottom of your paper to make sure that there's enough room over negative space around here. And tape it down and put your graphite paper in between. Let's see, I think, I'm trying to see if I'll show. I wanna show you drawing it yourself. So I'm gonna just kind of, if you wanna do the outline, feel free. You can put the graphite paper in between here. Okay, tape it down. Put it in here, shiny side down, okay. Get the tape again here. And then I like to use a colored pencil so that I can see where I've been. This one isn't too much too intricate of a design. But then what you wanna do is go around all of the lines, trace them on there so that it will transfer to your finished project. So with this being, so that is option one. Option two, there are probably other options that I'm not mentioning too, sure. right? But the other option that I was gonna just show you is, since this is a darkish medium to darkish value, you can use chalk to outline your frog, okay? Oh. So let me show you real quick like how to draw. I'm just gonna use this paper over here. I wasn't planning on doing this, but all of a sudden I feel like I want to. Let me just show you a couple little tips for drawing a frog. So with a frog, you can think about if you want to do it straight on, let's say this is your paper here. If you want to do him straight on, you would have like an eye here, an eye here, connect it there, and then kind of bring out little triangle sides down and then like a little shape there. But you might want him to have a little bit of a tilt to his head, a little yeah. bit of an expression, right? So you can, um, you can do, okay, so I'm going to, have one eye here, and then I'm gonna have one eye here. So they're gonna be on the same plane. Can that, is that showing up? Is that dark enough? Yeah, that looks great. Okay, so to draw a frog, you're gonna draw the eyes here, and then I'm gonna kind of make a little triangle out to the side of both eyes. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm gonna bring that triangle down just a little bit, and then I'm gonna make a little body here. And you can decide if you wanna have like, hey, that's his arm, or there's his, you know, that's a little weird actually right there, but you know, you can do a, little, a few little lines there to indicate arms or legs, I guess. Do frogs have arms? They do if they sit up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> legs. <laughs> that's funny, the things you think about. And then for the mouth, with this froggy friend, he has kind of a little smile, right? Yes. But we have other samples 
other examples where it has, where you can have a little bit of a V to oh, your smile, yeah. or you can have, I don't know if they can see this. Can they see that one back there? Probably not. Not quite. Not quite. Well, I'm just gonna grab it. <laughs> or you can have like a little bit of a more serious frog. <laughs> You know? Mr. Frog. Yeah. So here you have a little bit more of like a, um, almost like an upside down smile. Like that could be a smile there, but it's more of the peak towards the um, mouth and then it goes down. Okay. I like, I, I, I like actually that, dig actually. this frog. Yeah. I just looked at a picture and saw what a frog kind of looked like and I thought, let's do that. Okay. So depending on how you draw the mouth or the eyes or the angle of the eyes or even, even putting the catch lights in the eyes, it can change the mood of your frog or the expression of your frog. Feel free to follow along and do this bullfrog friend, but if you want to kind of deviate from that and do your own thing, I encourage it. So for this example though, I'll just, I'll show you maybe, how about, I'll just show you kind of like what a triangle might look like, okay? So you can kind of do like that. Oh, that's cool. I don't know if I would do like a really sharp V like that. Or you could kind of do, like if you wanted to do the little frowny face frog, you can kind of, or I shouldn't say frowny face. That's not frowny face necessarily. You kind of want to use this little um, point of the corner to be like where your line starts. If that makes sense, because that's technically supposed to try and indicate like that that's the top part of the mouth. Yeah. Yeah. You could do something like that. Okay, and then frogs, maybe your frog has a large chin. <laughs> That's okay, quite lovable, right? Anyway, so, oh, you know what? I was gonna show, uh, I have a sketchbook of all these little frog faces, but I think you we'll do. save that for Let's Make Art Matter. You should, that's a good idea. Or maybe we'll post a picture of that on Instagram Ooh, or something. Too. Stay tuned for Let's Make Art Matter yeah. and or Instagram. Yes, yeah. okay, so I'm gonna take my, so anyway, you've got options. Easy route is to do the outline, totally fine. Um, otherwise you can draw your own frog. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my own because I, I just want to. I wanna show you how to draw if you wanna do that. And what I'm doing right now is I'm looking at the patterns that I've made and kind of the color swatches and I'm trying to decide where I want the body of my frog. Knowing that one, um, I'm gonna preserve a lot of this texture here and color, but two, that I can still make some adjustments and add some paint on top if I don't necessarily like like all of this black. Um, yeah, that makes sense? That does make sense. All right, and I do wanna leave some negative space. I don't wanna get too close to the edges here. So, okay, so let's draw a circle and another circle. Okay, and I'm gonna connect those circles there. And then I'm gonna kinda of come out to the side here and here. that and then just kind of go off the page here and here and my guy's gonna have he's got he's got some meat to him you know he's a healthy frog he's a happy frog yeah I you know I didn't really talk much about like why I chose to do a frog and with the wetlands box I live close to some wetlands and it's really it's really been a peaceful place to me to go and to visit and to and I drive by it often actually. And I love, it's very flat and I love just how pretty it is. Like you can see the sun reflecting off of the water um, mm. and there's lots of wildlife. So when I go, there's frog sounds certain times of year, like the bullfrog sounds, you know, you probably, maybe you've heard those, maybe you haven't. Um, and then you hear like there's blue heron, there's mm. geese, there's lots of different birds hundreds of species of animals and birds cool yeah so yeah i've seen a couple cool. videos of it from you know doing this box with you yes you have and it is gorgeous yeah yeah and really the idea like some people think oh kansas is flat boring mm -hmm. western yeah. kansas is a little flat but the idea is that there's beauty everywhere if we look for it right like there's it's everywhere no matter where we are and but it's kind of like you have to change the way that you're looking at things to appreciate that beauty and to seek it out. And I think when we do that, it makes for a much more positive um, experience. Yeah. And I think it helps us to feel a little more grounded and, and all of that. So I like to go to the wetlands to feel refreshed. And I thought it'd be really fun to do a little bull bullfrog. And really my kids, um, sometimes in the summers, 
will go outside and find frogs cool. or toads. And um, they've named them. There was one named Toby. <laughs> well, a few years ago, they just were really into it. And they, they felt like the same frog was coming out all the time. And they, they, so they named it. And then they would find it like kind of hiding. Under, we have some big trees. And it was kind of hiding under the tree. We kind of stay in that little flower bed and stuff. Um, anyway, but they wanted me to paint them a picture of a frog. And so that's what I did. It's cool. Kind of this, I should have brought that. You should, that would be correct. Okay, another thing I'll post on social media. Yes, the frog. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So here's our, here's our frog, and um, the nice thing about chalk is that you can kind of erase if uh, I want his eyes to be a little bigger. Frogs have big eyes. They can, right? Their eyes tend to be kind of a, one of their, their main feature. And you can do eyelids. Okay, so we're going to give this frog some eyelids. Now, if I wanted the frog to look angry, I could do, like, eyelids that look like that, right? Yes. <laughs> but I don't really want an angry frog. So... I, I can make it look sad or tired and do the slant it the other way. <laughs> and again, we'll do more of these little froggy features in our, let's make our matter. But I love the different personalities but, you, know, you yeah. give these frogs. So I think I'm just going to kind of keep mine pretty chill <laughs> and just kind of do some eyelids there. And then there's a little bit of extra kind of skin that comes around here. So we'll just kind of indicate. And I don't need to draw every detail of my frog right now, but it does help to kind of have a few little um, touches so that I know when I'm painting. I actually don't like the angle of that, so I'm going to bring that down. Okay, something like that. And mm. smile-wise, I'm going to. I think I'm going to keep it simple, just for the fact that I'm trying to teach this method, and I think that'll be good. All right. So once you've either traced your outline using the graphite paper and the and the outline provided, or drawn your own. We're now going to do a technique called negative shape painting. And basically what that means is that we are going to take this negative shape. So this is your positive shape. Your subject is the positive shape. And then everything outside of that would be the negative shape. So we're just going to paint alongside of outside of this outline. And that Sweet. is negative shape painting. Wow. Yeah. We kind of did it too, actually, in the um, wildflowers tutorial when we cut in our background, but we did, cause we did have something already there, but we were still cutting in. So okay. anyway, it's a fun method to use, especially if you want to like get some cool like textures going on. Yeah, I'm excited about it. So what we're going to do for the background is we're going to use a um, medium value gray or like a darkish bluish gray or medium dark, medium bluish gray. So I'm going to get some blue and I'm going to get some black and I'm going to get some white. My palette's getting messy, but I don't care. It's fine. And then I'll probably go ahead and pop some yellow over here too, just in case I need it. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my three quarter inch flat brush. And I'm going to start with the blue, make a little pile, add some black. Okay. Oh, I love that dark blue. It probably reads black, but man, that's pretty. It's it's a dark, Look but at it's, that. it's not quite it's like all a Prussian the, yeah. blue. Uh, mm, that's nice. I'm gonna add a touch of touch of white because I don't want to get too light too fast. And then I'll add a little bit of yellow and a little bit more yellow. I like that. It's looking very blue. Um, and the instructions say gray, but. We can do what we want. Yeah. <laughs> Shh. I could add, um, honestly, you could just do black and white with a touch of yellow if you want to do like a warm gray. I'm kind of digging this blue though. All right, so we'll go ahead and use this. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start cutting in. I'm going to use the edge of my brush. And it's okay if your um, paint mixes with your chalk. It, I have not found anything to go wrong really with that. It doesn't really hurt anything. Cool. Now, when I fill in this shape, I want to leave little bits of the background. Can you see that? Let me show the side cam. So, let me get it. There we go. See how I'm leaving like a little bit of that showing through? Mm -hmm. I don't want just a, a solid mass of color. I want some of that background peeking through. All right, so I'm going to kind of go over. And to do that, you just give a little bit of a feathery, light touch with your strokes. That makes sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. Almost like brushing. Yeah. Lightly brush. Lightly brush with your brush. With your brush. Thank you for that. You're well, yeah, you're welcome. 
<laughs> That's what I'm here for. Yeah, awesome. You can, you know, depending on how, how you want it, you can leave a lot or you can leave a little. Up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in that shape. You can kind of take some liberty here if you wanna um, make any changes to your outline. I'm gonna kind of just adjust here and make that a little more round. And then maybe add a little up there. And if you want, you can go ahead and take your um, scraper tool, okay, or, or your bamboo skewer. Maybe I'll try the bamboo skewer. If I can, you know what? Mine may have disappeared. And I don't see it. There is another, you know, I have another one in this box, so I will grab it. That's why we put two in this box. Smart. That was some options. Aha, here we go. All right, and it may be dry now and won't show up, but oh, there's a little bit. But if I want, I can just do a few little like marks. You know, you could even do a little pattern. We're gonna kind of do a little bit of that in our frog selfies. Let's make art matter. All right. Cool. And look what I did there. I made a little mess. We 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 are okay with messes here. Yeah, we yeah, like messes. We, we're okay. I went. I don't know if I'd say like, but we accept them. I'm just like kidding. Messes uh, show is a good. You know, it's a okay. Let's run with that. Yep. I like it. Thank you. I like it. All right. So we're just gonna kind of make sure that I like what's going on here and. Um, we will be ready for the next step, which is going to be to make the light green part of the eye, this part. Mm. It's not really white. If you actually look at photographs of frogs, there's actually some really pretty colors and patterns that are going on inside really? of some of their eyes. Yeah, or part of their, parts of their eyes. Yeah, well, that's kind of cool. All right, I'm going to brush this off on my brush board and then wash out my brush. Getting patriotic here. Good. It's getting close to that time of year, seems like. All right. Wash out my brush. I love this brush basin. It's got some ridges on the side, on, on the bottom of this, so I can nice, nicely like get the paint out of the bristles. Yeah. It's a and then good, I have that... one dirty side and one clean side, usually. Mm. Then I'll end up with both mm. dirty sides at some point <laughs> during the process, but it's okay. All right, let me clean up my stuff over here just a tiny bit. The next thing we can, we can do is do the, the eyes, like I mentioned, and to get the color that we want, we're gonna make a light green, kind of like a celery color, color almost. And so basically all that is is just some white. See that okay? Yep, and some yellow. And then a tiny touch of blue. Let's add a little more vibrancy to this. Tiny bit more. A lot of a lot of painting is kind of add a little bit more, add a little bit more, do a little bit of this. Kind of trying to get to that spot where you really like it. Okay, I think that will work for me. A little bit of water, make sure it's fluid. So when I put what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, make some circles. And, and fill them mostly in, but I do not have to fill them all the way in. And I'm okay if some of the background still shows through. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to just kind of, you know what? And I can tell already I want a little more yellow in there. This reads very white to me. I actually made a bunch of, um, as I was doing samples, I made several with white eyes. And then I took a picture and I showed somebody like when the eyes were still dry and just look kind of creepy. <laughs> like, oh. Cause like they, it was like a little bit blown out in the photo. They looked a little bit like possessed almost. I don't know. That's probably. Yeah. Well, anyway. Not what Anywho. we're going for. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of loosely paint some of this eye action over here. Totally okay with the pe texture showing through. Totally okay. Not covering it completely because we're going to be coming back with eye, you know, the eyelid skin and all the other stuff. But let's get that base down. And then this you can leave black or you can kind of cover it. Doesn't matter. We're going to come in and um, put the black part of the eyes in and a little bit here. Okay. So once you have that done, let's go ahead and let it dry. And then our next step is going to be to put the, do a dry brush outline using our round number eight brush. Okay. 
Okay, so I think, honestly, we really can't do this while it's a little bit wet. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Yes, okay, so we're gonna do dry brushing techniques. So, but we first wanna get our brush wet. Sounds a little odd, doesn't it? Yes. So get, we always wanna start with a slightly dampened brush. You can uh, dry, tap off most of the water. Really what a dry brush makes me think of is very little paint. Hmm. So it's not so, we don't want much water either, but you want very little paint. So I'm gonna dab my brush into some paint. Okay, I'm not gonna add any water. And then I'm going to tap a lot of it off. Okay, that's probably too much to be quite honest. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through and outline my, my frog, loosely. I don't want like a, if you do a solid outline, it's gonna look a little more illustrative or like cartoony, mm. which is fine if that's what you want. But if you do a little bit looser, it'll give you a little bit more of the vibe that I was going for. All right, so I'm gonna start up here and these chalk outlines, if you still have them on, are helpful, I think, when I'm doing this part. So I can just kind of go over them and they kind of help me to not worry so much about a nice thick solid line. But I do want a little bit of outline for this. And as we said, he's kind of got some action down here, kind of indicate his nice healthy chin. Good chin. Yep, strong chin. Strong. <laughs> Knows and, what he's about. And I'm chin. gonna go ahead and even add right here where I've got the kind of indication of arms. <laughs> no, legs. <laughs> Leg. Lar Which is it? Larms? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> arms. Not funny. I don't know. We, we say that about our dog too sometimes, like her arms. But, yeah. You know, it's all good. If you don't know what they mean, then got other issues probably, right? I don't know. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna kinda come in this way. Now, I've got a lot of black going on like right in the face of my frog, which I'm actually gonna cover up quite a bit of that in the next step. So I'm just gonna kind of ignore that for right now. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of try and um, give the idea of eyelids up here, okay? I am gonna add a tiny bit of water now that I'm going over kind of this rougher texture. And what I'm gonna do is kind of decide, okay, how do I want my frog's eyes to be shaped? And I was, I kind of like doing them not perfectly round, but instead kind of like, um, not necessarily geometrical, but kind of some connected straight lines, if that makes sense. Okay. As opposed to curvilinear or round everything. All right, and then I'm gonna come back later and add up here some more green. So let's, so we're kind of looking past that at the moment. Got it. Next, we can go ahead and add the smile or the face or the mouth. Mouth, let's say mouth. We'll say mouth. Maybe, the, maybe they don't want their frog to smile. I really don't yeah. want to put that on them. That's <laughs> true. Maybe the frogs are a little bit more down to business. It's all good. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna loosely paint that on there. There we go. All right, I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna wipe off the chalk and then we'll start with our next, our next step. Now that this has had a chance to dry, I'm going to take my shop towel, get a little bit damp and just wipe off some of these chalk marks gently. Or not gently, it doesn't really matter probably. All right. So at this stage of the game, we, we're about, um, we're here, we need to add the eyes here, the black eyes. And then the, after that, we'll add some more color for the, to do the form and the shape of the frog and cover up any of the extra black that I don't necessarily love on there and make it a little bit more, um, add a little style and maybe personality to it. Does that sound good? It sounds great. Okay, so with your round brush also, go ahead and dip back into your black. I think I just, and then, um, so go ahead and dip back in your black, and then we'll kind of make little um, pupils, right? So what I'm gonna do is kind of do a almond shape, or kind of an oblong shape, okay? And depending on like if you have the 
sides of the eyes kind of going up or down. You can adjust the expression. It'll kind of give it a little bit of a different expression. I kind of like to do a little, a little triangle top there with a little peak. I don't know if that's showing very well. I'm gonna show the, here you can kind of see. It's not a perfect oval, right? Yeah. It's a little more. Like a lemon almost. Like, oh, that's a good, that's a good analogy. Yeah. Or a football or a, or a UFO. There you go, yep. It's almost like a like a elongated diamond. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. And I like that. I, I think do that's too. nice because really, really when you look at the frogs, really they're when you look at straight on the eye, the pupil is actually kind of still on the side. Like we can't see all of it, so really? it wraps around. Yeah, depending on the angle. Okay, we're gonna leave that there, and that'll be drying while we're working on this next step. Okay, so this next step we're gonna be using our three-quarter inch brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a nice green, like a nice yellow green, so that I can start building the shape of my frog, giving him some contour, see here? Mm -hmm. Kind of, and then adding some mm -hmm. colors in there to make him still show some of the background, but not be so overpowering, right? All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mix a yellow, muted yellow green, so that's gonna be yellow, blue, and white. So I think I probably need a few more, a little more paint. Yellow, blue, probably okay on the blue, and probably get on the white. Dampen your brush. Um, start with the yellow, because with this one you're gonna have, um, it's gonna be a yellowy blue as opposed to a, a blue green. So we'll start with the yellow and then we'll go ahead and add a little bit of white. And then we'll add a little bit of blue. Not that little. <laughs> there we go. And then I'm gonna add even more yellow, I think. Just a little more yellow. Nice, I like that. And the ultramarine blue actually desaturates my yellow just a tiny bit, which I like. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lightly brush this color onto a few places to kind of give the frog a little bit of a shape. Let me show you what I mean. While still kind of leaving some of the under layer. I don't love that big spot there, so I'm gonna kind of like cover that up a little. Cool. Kind of define, I'm definitely gonna bring it up here on his eyelids. Kind of define it a little bit more while still, and I'm just lightly, like if you see it, I'm just kind of lightly doing it. I don't know if you can see that, just a light brush. Maybe a tiny bit more paint. Um, here we have a lot going on with this, and I'm gonna come in with another color too, so don't feel like you have to get everything with this, with this one, with this pass. Just kind of a nice opportunity to kind of, you know, give it some color and some character. Yeah, I like watching this color go on. It's yeah. Cool. It's cool too how the, the black on the face was kind of a little distracting. Yeah. And now it's just a good little accent. Yeah, it kind of almost acts as a neutral with the yellow over it. Yeah. So I was kind of thinking. All right, so, I, I'm kind of imagining that the highlight is coming from this side, um, the light, and so, oops. So I'm gonna be a little heavier with the um, yellow green on this side. Got it. Okay. All right, what do you think? He looks good. Come into shape. And yeah. you know, if I went a little heavy on the, little, on the line, I can kind of cover up a little bit of that now. Hmm. See, kind of make him a little less harsh looking maybe. Oh. What do you think? Yeah. All right, so I like that as a start. And then I'm gonna come through with another color. We're gonna mix a slightly lighter yellow green. So we're gonna add a little more yellow, okay? And this is where we will, and a little more white, we'll add just a few little touches to what we already did to just give a little bit of a super highlight. Not super, okay. not super highlight. A little more of a highlight, okay? See that? Mm. So. The highlight actually probably hit right there. It's coming from this side, by the way. Okay, and they do have a little bit of a um, triangular shape. Um, I want to say nose. <laughs> yeah, that kind of goes out a little bit. Yeah, it's like so that. it's okay to kind of do like a little diagonal there, and then you can do a little touch, a few touches here and there if you want to. Blend that out. And I still love the pops of orange coming out. I, yes. They're so good. Thank you for mentioning that because you don't want to cover all of that up. Be sure yeah. to leave some. All right, so I think 
the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a, a dark olive green, which is, um, I'm going to leave with all my brush on there because we're still working with greens. Um, and it still won't hurt, related. it won't hurt anything. Yeah. Excuse me. So I'm going to grab some green and some red, put those on my palette. Uh, let's start with green here. Throw that in there. Look how bright that is. Ooh, love it, but a little too much. I'm gonna add some red to it. Okay. It's like St. Patty's Day bright green. Yes. I mean, that neutralized it big time. And then I'm yeah. gonna add some yellow to this. I want kind of a nice, like I said, dark olive green. Okay. And then a little bit of black. I think we need more yellow though to make it olivey green. Maybe it's. a little too green so I'm going to add red to keep toning that down. See how that red just made it a tiny bit more yeah, brown? Nice. Okay, so we're going to kind of go with that and then I'm going to add a tiny bit more yellow. I don't think it needs even more red. A little more red. Okay, I'm liking that. Let's see how that would look. I think we can even go a little bit more brown. A little more red. I like to add just a little at a time because if you've watched some of my other tutorials, you'll see that sometimes I go a little overboard, <laughs> especially with the black. What? I know, right? No. No. <laughs> okay, so yeah, okay, I like that. Um, so I'm just gonna pick a few areas, kind of down here maybe, where maybe there's a little bit of shadow. So that's where his like head, his face is kind of on top. And then this side we decided is gonna be the side that it's not in the light. So we're gonna just add a few little strokes on there. I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit to the eyelids to help it blend with everything else. Okay, so you don't need much. Don't need much at all. Let's see, I'm gonna kind of put some there too. He what looks so wise. You like it? He looks yeah. wise? I like that, okay. We need to come up with a wise name then, right? Mm. If you want to scratch in, any, at any time, feel free. If you, I think there's a lot of texture already on here, so I'm not too worried about that, but I am gonna do a little adjustment over here. Add a little more yellow. Gabriel is Actually, wild. you know what, I changed my mind, I don't like that. You know that you can actually, before it dries, get a wet paper towel and wipe off paint that you don't like. What? <laughs> yeah. I didn't love what I did there, so. Okay, I like that better. Now we're gonna move on to the next step, which is to um, do the white catch lights in the eyes. Now, depending on where you put the catch lights in the eyes, you can make it look kind of a little more serious. See how it's like a, <laughs> like a, a little bit of a, just a subtle line of a highlight, okay? There's this one that's a little more of like a happy, like a, a rainbow highlight shape, you know what I'm talking about? Like an yeah. arch, a little bit more arched. I know I have some other examples that have I like the different rainbow, highlights, right? but yeah, some of them in the background you might see. So you can kind of decide what you want, what you want your frog's expression or mood to be like and go with it. So I'm gonna take my round brush for this and I'm gonna dip it into my white paint, add a little bit of water and then I'm gonna kind of roll the paint into a point here. I think I need a little more paint. Okay, and then I'm gonna go for just a little bit like of a, like a little bit of an arc like that. Cool. So here we go. And catch lights are like, they're not necessarily a solid mass, right? There's like little flecks. So I, I'm gonna be really loose with it, okay? I think I am gonna maybe connect those though. There we go. What do you think? Does that oh. do the job? Yeah, I like that a lot. I think it kind of come to life a little bit. Dang, that looks cool. You like it? Yes. <laughs> Keenan's good for the confidence, thanks. Goodness <laughs> gracious, look at his little eyes. Look at his little guy. He's coming alive. Yeah. I'm gonna take a second now and no, we'll do that. In the, we'll do it in the finishing touches stage. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add a little bit of that phthalo green in here, but we'll get there. 
All right. We're gonna let that dry, but actually the next step is using some Neo colors. And so oh. I, think, I think you can use those with wet paint, right? Cause they're Neo water soluble. Colors. So we're gonna go for it. Had you ever heard of Neo colors before never. I came around? I had never heard of Neo colors yeah. before. It was cool. We've had, I've been showing some of the other artists the Neo colors and they're like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like I need yeah. a set. I'm like, yes, you do. Super cool. Like I'm telling everybody about it. Get them, get them, get them. Very versatile, lots of fun. In fact, I think the first time I heard about them was when we did your photo shoot. Yes, yes, probably. For the wetlands box. You know, I probably won't stop talking about them either. Okay, good, yeah, don't. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna take our Neo color and we are gonna add some details to, where did my sample go? Here we go. We're gonna kind of go around here and add some warmth and, and this yellow vibrant color around the eyes, okay? Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna, you just push kind of like a crown, but these are 10 times better than crowns, trust, trust me. So this kind of helps bring some Ooh. warmth and I think it makes it kind of a little more alive in my mind. One thing, like I said, when you look at, if you look at a photograph of a frog, there's just a lot of stuff going on in their eyes, which is really cool. You can even put little dots in there. There's a lot that have little dots in their eyes. So I'm gonna kind of go around the eyes here and then I'm gonna pick a few spots to also add this. I know this is kind of like my highlight side. I don't necessarily want a super solid line, right? Okay. This is kind of my highlight side. We know this is kind of a chin. We'll kind of do some dabs there. And then if you want your frog to maybe have like um, some freckles or some spots, yes. you could do that. I think, let's see, where does our frog want some spots? What would it look like if we put some, yeah. So he's gonna have just some little, little spots, some little speckles. Cool thing about frogs, you know, some bullfrogs have like very smooth skin, but a lot of them, a lot of frogs in general and have just some bumps to their skin. Like they've been around, they've, they've seen some stuff. They've seen things. Yeah, like they're, and you know, it helps them camouflage, I'm sure, right, too. Yes. So yeah, you can add a few little um, dots around. This is the fun part, so do like, do what you want. Oh, one nice thing. If you don't like what you did with your Neo color, you can wipe it off. What? Because it is not fixed, it's not permanent. Huh. We'll talk about the other aspect of that in a little bit here when we talk about fixing it. Okay, cool. Fixing it with a fixative. So like if I'm like, uh, I don't like, I don't like this dot over here. I can just wipe it off with some water. Oh snap. Isn't that cool? <laughs> pretty, what? Pretty awesome. Those things are crazy. Yeah, right? I like them. And then you could even like dip it in some water and like dab a little of the water off. And then, you know, it kind of makes it a little more of a fluid. Oh, cool. A fluid look. I can show you too. If you take the phthalo green, so this is the canary yellow that came in the wetlands box. We also have this phthalo green. Mine, mine broke, but I have part of it. And I'm going to use my green as kind of more of the shadow um, accent. And so I'm just going to kind of bring it in i will kind of use some on the eyelids too, I think. And maybe even do a little around the pupil there, kind of add a little bit of That's a good idea. Uh, vibrancy there. Kind of add some of the spots in there. Maybe I'll kind of go around the mouth a little with that too. I feel like I need more of this color in general in here. So I think I'm gonna actually use some paint also. But have some fun, like just, you know, and if you wanted to like, make like a background too. Like you could do stripes in the background or something if you wanted. I have one where I did where I made a dark background and I did little stars to make it look like it was outside at night. Um, yeah, so actually when I was a kid, I grew up in Oklahoma and at night we would go frog hunting. Fun. Yeah, we'd go find the frogs and pick them up and um, it, was, it was kind of fun because yeah, they would come out at a certain time at night around like this one street light down in, in like the cul-de-sac and yeah cool I, I just that's a, a very big or a very strong memory yeah. that i have frogs are frogs are like a, they're always that that little creature that everyone wants to hold when they pop up around if you're not looking for them and they come up out of nowhere <laughs> it's always like oh snap we got to pick that up yeah we got to look at that little guy yeah 
we were actually doing some mini golf one time and we recently and we looked at we were in uh where were we at the beach we were down in oh orange beach alabama okay and and we were at a mini golf place which not which is not is gulf shores anyway so but there's a little frog on one of the plants like this little tree frog it was really cute we we're just so sitting cool. there waiting for the next hole and there it is <laughs> It was good. It came at the right time. The kids were getting a little grumpy, so I was thankful oh, nice. for the distraction. <laughs> Let's just be real. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna. Go, I, this is looking yellow to me, which I don't. I don't mind. I like that. It's pretty, but I do really love like the cool green tones as well. Yeah. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of that in. So now we're at the finishing touches stage of our painting. We're almost there, and so this is the time where you just look at it and say, okay, is there anything else I want to add? Is there are there any other touches that I want to make to make it mine or to just give it a little bit more life? Whatever, you get to decide. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to tone down this bright, bright phthalo. And I'll probably add some green too. There are so many good colors on your palette and table right now. You like that? Yes. <laughs> well, good, I'm glad. This is still very bright, so I'm gonna go ahead and tone down the tiny bit of black even. Don't go too far, yeah, I have to remind myself, don't go too far, Larry. Don't go too far. <laughs> All right, here we go, let's see. Oh yeah, <sighs> this is gonna be good. All right, so I'm just gonna pick a few places where I, I want to dress him up a little, you know? Have him stand out. So maybe I'll have like this side kind of be the more cool green side. You can do whatever you want with your frog, honestly. Frogs can be greens, blues, browns. I mean, there's some tree frogs that are some wild colors. There are. You know, so, and do we really have to be realistic, not necessarily. No. All right, we can do what we want. Okay, so I kind of like that. I like that I still have like, I still have a lot of the warm yellow green tones that I love, but then I've added a little bit of, kind of to balance it out, I've added some more of those cool um, blue greens. So I'm liking that, Keenan. I am too. I, the only other thing I want to do now for a finishing, finish, finishing touch before the final finishing touch, mm -hmm. which I'm kind of saving here for the end, is to go in with my round brush and just add a little bit of a highlight and some dimension with the, with the black, the pupil part of the eye. So I'm gonna take my black, I'm gonna add a tiny bit of white, okay, get kind of a gray going on there. Is that showing up okay? Mm, you know, we'll add a little bit more so you guys can see it. And then I'm just gonna kind of add a few little strokes in there just to kind of give the eye some dimension, just a little bit. And then if I need to, I might even like use my black and kind of, if I need to reshape the eye just a little, I can. I don't want them to get too lost in this. What do you think? That looks great. You think it needs anything else? If you want to add the little nostril things that um, frogs have, I you can kind of, well, sometimes they're a little lower down. Just depends on the angle of your frog. I just like to add them a little bit lighter, or you can actually even use your, um, your thalo green neo color too to add the little touches there. And last but not least, we are gonna give this thing one more splatter. Oh, perfect. Just to, cause I, I love the splatter and I want some splatter to be on this background as well. Oh yeah. Okay. So what I'm gonna do, and you don't have to do this. This is completely optional. I highly recommend it though. So what I'm gonna do, oh, wash my brush. We don't wanna leave paint on our brushes if we can help it cause they, it can dry on there and it's tough to get it out. The brush cleaner is great by the way. I actually saved some brushes with this brush cleaner. You did? It's the Masters brush cleaner. And um, I had some old, I just wanted to test it out. I had some old brushes that I thought were ruined. I saved them kind of for like making textures. Cool. But I really like soaked them in this and like worked at it and I got them out and I can use the brushes now. That's crazy. I, I, no lie. <laughs> That's amazing. It is amazing. I don't know if it'll work with every brush, but man, it was kind of nice. All right. <sighs> this is going to feel silly perhaps. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create, I'm just gonna tear my paper towel and cover up the eye. 
A little weird. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm doing this so that when I splatter, I don't splatter on the eyes so much. Got Does it. Does that make sense? Because I don't yeah. really want to cover up or have to redo the black and the white that we just touched up. Yeah. But what I am gonna do is get my chip brush and I'm gonna look at this and say, okay, what color should I do to splatter on this that might be a nice, um, be a nice touch. I think I'm gonna go for blue. There's a lot of greens and a lot of yellows going on. So I think a blue, a blue green would be nice. I concur. Gonna, you concur. I Good. concur. I was waiting for your approval, actually. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Very thoughtful. Oh, uh, you know. <laughs> Okay, and I'm gonna add enough water to kind of fill the bristles of the brush, but not, not dripping. We don't want it to be too drippy. i give a little test here. Okay, remember to make sure the coast is clear here. And I'm gonna, oh, this is fine. Oh, so good. I could do this for days. And if you wanna go wild, feel free. Like. <laughs> Nice. That almost matches your napkin color. It, you know what? I did that on purpose. You nailed it. <laughs> I did not, but that would be cool if I did. Okay, and then I'm gonna take off the little masks on the eyes. Ah, spa day over. There you go. And if there are any little spots, that's funny, like cucumbers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If there are any little spots that I did get on the eye that I don't like, I can just dab them off while it's dry, or while it's wet, excuse me. And voila. We are good to go. So that's gonna dry and it's gonna look great. Should I go ahead and dry it? Or can we just imagine that it's dry? I think this is good. I think it looks great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna let this dry. And then if you make this frog, this bullfrog friend, froggy friend, I would love to see it. If you wanna post it on Facebook at, in our acrylic group at um, Let's Make Art Acrylic, find that, we can, you can join our group. I'd love to see it, or you can post it on Instagram at Let's Go Make Art and um, give it a name too if you want. All right, thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you next time.